and welcome to module Alteryx 101 of the Information Lab and Data Schools Alteryx Data Skills training course. My name is Viktoria Stlaikovska and I am thrilled to have you here. So it's the first step of learning Alteryx and in this module you will learn basics of using Alteryx, how to input output data, how to clean it and prepare your data for your needs. You can watch this module as a standalone training or as a part of our Alteryx Data Skills series. If you find this helpful and would like us to help you and your team make sense of your business data, please reach out to info at theinformationlab.co.uk. Check the description for links to this module training materials and other useful links to help you develop your data skills. And remember to click subscribe to be the first to know about our new videos. All right, so let's start from the theory. Today's our task is to explore data regarding incidents with stuck lift that the London Fire Brigade have responded in the last three years. The question we'll be looking to answer is, how can we prepare the data to make it easier to analyze? Which property types take the most time on average when the London Fire Brigade try to fix a stock leaf in the different London boroughs? And can we blend this data with new data types like spatial polygons? Let's go straight into the Alteryx. When we first open up Alteryx, this is the default area you see as a user. Along the top, we've got the tool palette with different tabs. Each tab contains various tools based on its functionality. We've got the canvas when we drag and drop tools to build up workflow. The configuration pane allows us to customize workflow as required. And lastly, we got the result pane that shows us log information about our last run. To start working with our dataset, we need to input it first. In In Out tab, choose Input Data Tool, click Setup Connection. Alteryx can work with a wide variety of file types, and today we're working with a text file of CSV. Find the file in our Inputs folder, and now let's see what we have in our configuration pane. So it's good to know where our file is located. Then we have a preview of 100 first records. In the option pane, you can configure how it's gonna upload to the Alteryx. For us right now, the most important thing is number six. First row contains file names. So it will push first row into our field names instead of us manually naming each field. So in this particular example, we don't need to change anything else. And let's leave rest and hit run. In our result pane, we have the number of the records. As you can see, it said partial result. It's showing us 4,000 from 15,000 records. And to see the entire dataset, we need to put Browse tool. So let's put it into the canvas after our input tool. So we need to click Run to see the results of the Browse tool. So now in the result pane, you can see 50,000 records, so it's showing us all the results we have in the data. And if we click on any field, it will give us a little summary in configuration pane of the Browse tool. It's going to be data quality, if there's any issues, information about empty, null values, plus the statistic of minimal, maximum and average values. The next tool we're going to use as a select tool. It's easy to understand what fields do we have, what the data types we have in it. And we also can change data types and names of our fields. So let's bring it into the canvas. And it's immediately giving us information about the fields we have. Field award code, we don't need, so unclick it. Pump count, we need a double. So Let's change it to the double. Pump hours total also double. Hourly nation cost double. And incident nation card double. Click run. So now let's go into result pane. You can see we have messages with the errors. So 33. And incident national cost we have nulls. And pump count we have nulls. And the more important is pump count because it refers to the number of fire trucks or other appliances the London Fire Brigade sent out to deal with the incident. Any row is an all. It means for some reason the appliances wasn't sent out or it wasn't recorded.
for us those records are irrelevant and unusable so we're gonna filter them out by using filter tool so let's bring it into the canvas now let's go into configuration we need basic filter column to choose is pump count and condition is not null let's hit the run the filter tool has two anchors the first one is true and the second is false when we click a true anchor it means every record has satisfied the condition of the basic filter and in the false it's inverse so let's check we'll see that every pump count is a null here and when we go into the true results you can see the pump count they all have values when we talk about dates it's not easy to change it in the select tool the best practice to working with the date and time is by using date time tool its main purpose is to convert strings to dates and dates to strings you only need to know the proper format to convert so let's bring date time from our parse palette tool in the configuration we need to specify format from string to date the string field is date time of the call let's name the new column as cloud date time and specify the incoming string field as date slash month slash years and hours minutes seconds so let's bring select tool to see if we have the right format from the preparation tool palette let's drag the select tool into the canvas unclick date time of the call and we can see it's a string type cloud date time is a date type format and let's bring it to the front and click run and when we click to the output anchor of the select tool we can see our new field of date time on the second place of the fields the next field is building names i want to change the case of the values what we can do is by bringing data cleanse tool after the select tool by default all the fields are selected to be cleansed since the data cleansing tool can be pretty intensive on our CPU, I suggest only choosing the fields that we need to cleanse. And in our case, it's building names and street fields. So let's take the boxes for building name and a street and let's modify case for title case. There's other options available in a data cleansing tool. For this particular example, we simply need to modify the case and we hit the run. Go to the output anchor and check the result pane. We can see that the title case has been applied to the building name and streets. So we'd like to carry out a small alteration to the date time column that we had in our data set. We can do this by using formula tool in the preparation tab of our tool palette. So let's drag it into the canvas after our data clean tool. Few things to keep in mind. If it's a new field or you modifying the existing one and what the data type of the result if you look at the configuration pane formula tool allows us to carry a wide variety of functions click the first button and it will show you the different formulas that you can utilize to our data set and you can search or browse a different formula that alter access available to the users click select column and add column we'll name it months and a year the formula we're going to use is daytime trim. Daytime trim is a function that removes unwanted portion of daytime and it standardizes all your data values. It returns the modified dates. In the parameter it takes daytime data, so let's put cloud daytime of ours. And the second is a trim type, so let's put months. Formula tool gives us preview of the data we're gonna have after running the formula so you can see we have year we have months day as the first day of the month and all the time goes to zeros let's click run and check the results click the anchor after the formula tool so look at the original values we have all the data for the daytime and especially time and this is before our formula tool so let's look at the results of the formula we need to find months year so and as you can see it has year months first day of the month and all the time is put to zeros so we change our data set to better facilitate the original point of this workflow which is to answer the question of which property types 
take the most time on average when the London Fire Brigade comes out to fix a stock lift in different London boroughs. So data need to be reshaped in a way that we only need values for boroughs, then property type, and time they spent on the property. So the answer to this question, we should use Summarize tool. You can find it in a Transform tool tab. In the configuration pane, let's put boroughs and action as a group by. Then borrow code, group by, property type is group by. And now we need to summarize hours and summary of all of the time they spent. So let's put pump hours total, add, summarize, and incident national cost summarize as well. Everything we just created, it will effectively mean for each borrow, borrow code and property type, it will summarize all hours and the cost. So let's click run and see how many records do we have. Let's click on the output anchor. We have 1000 records that created from 50,000. We not quite got the answer yet. There is a few more steps we need to carry out. First, we need to sort it. We're going to use sort tool from preparation tab. Let's drag it into the canvas. In the configuration, the first field we're going to choose is borrow. Let's put it ascending. All borrows will present alphabetically. And the next one, sum of hours, is going to be descending. So most of the time will be at the top and the least time will be at the bottom. Let's hit run and we'll see what we have. We created order of the data. For each borrow, we would have their own set of rows with bigger time for firefighters property type on the top and the least hours on the bottom. All the data sorted and now we need to cherry pick the results to get the top of the property types. We can use a sample tool to give us each borrow's top 5 time consuming incidents by property type. In the configuration tab, we need to group by the borrow and use first n rows. And number of rows is going to be 5 because we need top 5. Let's hit run and see what we have. We can see 5 records for each borrow's and it will be the 5 most time consuming property types. So we answer the question we're looking to answer in this workflow. Now the next step, we can look into visualizing our finding using software such as Tableau. And to change visualization, we can bring a spatial data for each London borough to do things like building maps to display our findings. So we use the input tool to bring in another data set that will give us the spatial objects of London boroughs. Bring the tool into the canvas and find London borough boundaries .yxdb. It's Alteryx database proprietary file format. And now we have a great opportunity to learn how to join two data streams. So let's drag join tool. You can find it in a join tool palette. In the canvas, put it after input and a sample tool. Sample tool connect with the right anchor and input connect with the left anchor. So now in the configuration pane, we're gonna join by specific field on the left is going to be code, and the right is borrow code. Let's keep run and see what we have. In a J anchor, we can see 165 records. On the left and right anchor, you can see there is no record have been unmatched. So all 165 records have successfully matched from each data stream. And now we have a spatial object on each row. When using visualization offers such as Tableau, we can use the spatial object to make maps and start building our findings more visually expressive. Now our dataset is ready, and the next and final step is to output data. So drag into the canvas output tool after the J anchor of join tool. Similarly to the input data tool, we must set up a connection. So we click on the set up a connection, then we choose our data type. Since I'd like to visualize in Tableau, I'll choose the Tableau Data Extract. So let's give it a name. It's gonna be London Fire Brigade, ready to visualize. So click Save. If we look at the configuration pane, we can have some different output options. So by default, it's creating a new extract file. But the problem with this is when you hit Run for the second time since it already exists, it will give us an error. 
To avoid that, you can press override the existing extract file and if it doesn't exist, it will create it. With Alteryx, until you hit run, no files will be written into your hard drive. So click run and now we're done. Thank you for watching this module. I had a great time going through basics with you. In this module, we covered what AlterX is, how to input output data, how to clean and prepare your data for your needs better. I hope you can put what you learned in this module into practice soon. If you want to continue with our AlterX data skills training course, the next module is AlterX 102 Next Level Tools. You can jump straight in by clicking in the next video thumbnail on the right. And if you'd like us to help you and your team boost your data skills, please reach out to info at theinformationlab.co.uk. Lastly, remember to subscribe to this channel to get notified when we release new videos. Looking forward to seeing you in our next sessions.